Learning goal number five. I can solve equations with an unknown variable. So we're going to go through some vocabulary first to make sure you understand what variables are in equations. So a variable is, and this is something you're going to want to put down on your next fresh sheet of paper um, in your journal, a variable is a letter or a symbol that represents a number. An example of that, you see a little picture here, um, the x and the y are different variables. We don't have to deal with two in our samples, but that's just a nice visual for you to, to see. Now an equation too is uh, a statement showing that two expressions are equal, and I always think in my mind of like a balancing scale, how you want to equal those two sides out. Mm -hmm. So that is your vocab. Now before we can jump into actually solving these equations that have variables, we want to talk through how you're going to see different multiplication and division problems because there's more than just one way to do it. So when you're thinking multiplication, I can think of at least four ways that you might see a multiplication problem. When I say that, I mean like the, the symbol that's in there. What does that symbol look like? So before we even start, pause this and just write down as many as you can think of. Just take 10 seconds. How might you see a multiplication problem? Then come back and I'll tell you what they are. All right, so the four that I know are the most common is just that x sign. So 2 times 3, that's what this x means, is times equals 6. Now there's a second way, which is actually just a dot, and I know it sounds kind of weird, but the dot is in the middle here, so 2, if you see a dot, it means the same thing, it just means times. So 2 times 3 equals 6 again. You might also see an asterisk or a star, and again, it just means the same thing, 2 times 3 equals 6. Now often, especially once you get into algebra up into next year, and you'll see it a lot this year too, you're going to see no space. And that means there's going to be no space between a number and a variable. Remember we just talked about how a variable is just a letter that represents mm -hmm. a number. So an example of what that might look like is this. 2n equals 6. All that means is 2 times something is going to give you 6. So if you see one that looks like this, that just means multiply. That's all it means. So multiplication, you can see it that way. There's also lots of ways to do division. Now, also make sure that you're writing these down in your notebook so you have these oh, yeah. examples handy. Don't forget that. <laughs> <laughs> so, for division two, we actually um, are about to see four samples of division as well. And we the most common is this sign. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, an example of that would be six divided by three equals two. And that's probably one you're familiar with. Another one, though, is not a subtraction symbol, it's actually a fraction bar. So when you see that in two, a number above it, it's really saying 6 divided by 3 equals 2. Oh. We're going to learn about fractions later as well. A lot. <laughs> Another one is sort of a sideways slash mark and means the same thing. 6 divided by 3 equals 2. Um, and then the last one, um, I like to call it like a little house where you have a number inside of the, the symbol and then you have 6 divided by 3 equals 2. Okay, so, so make sure you remember those because you're going to see those later in our examples. Alright, so let's take a look at some. Remember, we've got our variables. So in this case, y is our variable. We need to solve for y. So 3 times y gives you 27. So what is y? Well, 3 times what gives you 27? 9. So y is 9. That's all there is to it. That's all it means. So another example, and we're going to give you an example of each of the different ways to do multiplication, each of the different ways to do division, so you can see what they look like, and then you're going to get a chance to try all of them. So for the next one, solve for m. 4, and then remember that dot means multiplication, so 4 times m equals 20. So 4 times what gives you 20? 5. Solve for b. Again, the asterisk means multiplication. B times 8 equals 24, so what times 8 gives you 24? 3. And then the last one, I don't think I told you this, but you don't have to write all of these ones down. You did need to write the ways that you solved the, or the different symbols, but you're going to be writing your own in just a second. And the last one is that one with the no space, so 6n equals 42, so 6 times n equals 42, so n is 7. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Helps to know your multiplication facts. Ah, for sure. Alright, so the next part is you trying. So I'm going to put four problems on here. 
and they're done in the four different ways that you do multiplication, and then I want you to write the equation. So you would write five times y equals 35, then you're going to solve for y. Then you're going to write y equals the answer, which I'm not going to tell you because you're going to figure it out. And so the other ones I'll just put right up here. So when you're done, you're going to have this copied and this with the answer, these ones copied with the answer, these ones, and these ones. Okay, so go ahead, pause it, answer those questions. It probably won't take you very long, and then come back because we've got a little bit of division, and then we'll be done. All right. We are on to division now, and once again, we're going to go through those different symbols. You don't have to write these down. Just review with us, and then you'll have some examples on your own. So here we have 8 divided by y equals 2. So we have to think, okay, well, we could think backwards, too. 2 times what would give me 8? Well, that would be 4, so our answer is 4. Another way to look at it is with our fraction bar here. So once again, we're thinking to ourselves, 32 divided by 4 equals what? Well, I know that 32 divided by 4 equals 8. So m actually equals 8 them. Another way is with this little sidebar. Um, so now we have to solve for b. b divided by 3 equals 4. And once again, for these, I like to think backwards. So 4 times 3 equals 12. So b is going to equal 12. And our last way is with our little house. We have 36 divided by 9 equals n, or in this case it would equal 4. So, once again, now is your turn to try. You're going to see um, four different problems with the four different symbols. And once again, these are going to go into your math journal. So, you're going to solve for y here just like that, so we should see equation and the answer. And here are the other examples with the fraction bar and sidebar and our house. So good luck and see you later.